Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. As you may know, I do not have a full start to finish cylinder head removal video for the RN engines. Those are the engines in the white block Volvos built from 99 and newer up to probably uh, 2008, 2009. So, I get a lot of questions about timing. Hey Robert, do I need to install the cam locking tools now or do I got to get the timing right now or whatever, you know. So, here's the deal. I normally do not install the cam locking tools when I'm taking the head apart, especially if that belt jump timing. If that belt jump timing, that belt or something, either the timing belt or the serpentine belt, got wrapped up in the crank and the crank locked up, the cams locked up, and it threw the timing. Now, you do not have to install the cam locking tool to take that stuff apart. If the timing's already messed up, it's messed up. What I normally do is remove everything up until I get the cam cover off. Then, if it has VVT hubs and the screws going through the cam sprockets on the VVT hub are sticking out over the cam cover, there's normally three screws. I'll back one or two of them out leave one tight so that the cam cover will clear them and I can get the cover off the head. And then I snug those two bolts back in that I loosen so that I can get the cam cover off. Once the cam cover is off and the cams are loose or removed from the cylinder head, then I set the crank on the mark. It's not tap dead center or top dead center, whatever you want to call it. The sprocket has a mark on it that gets aligned with a nipple on a oil pump. Align that and then the crank will be in line. There's no such thing as being 180 degrees off. Just put that crank sprocket on the mark and then deal with the cams when you go to put that stuff back together. So, when I go to put the engine back together I make sure that crank is on the mark before I put the cams in before I put the lifters in before I put any of that stuff in make sure that crank is on the mark then put your lifters in then set your cams in place with the cam seals on then you want to put the cam locking tools on the back then you want to see if those cam sprockets can align with the timing mark in the cover Okay, very seldom does those cams turn if it jumps timing. I really wouldn't worry about that. However, if somebody put the thing together at some point in time and did not make sure the marks were lined up or did not line up the marks, then you may want to reinstall those hubs and you will need the cam locking tool to reinstall the hubs. The only time I install the cam locking tools before I take the cylinder head off is if I'm going to remove the VVT hubs. The only time you really need to do that is if you're going to change the seals on them or you're going to change the hubs. Go ahead, put the cam locking tools on and deal with it then. However, if the car jump time you're probably not going to get those cams lined up to put that cam locking tool on. Just go ahead and take the cylinder head apart, take the cams out, then put the crank on the mark. You should be good to go. So there's a video here where I did the valve stem seals with the head on and I did a little clip showing you how I back those screws out of the cam sprockets to get the cover off. I'm going to go ahead and add that clip here. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Other than that, don't worry about the timing until you're putting all that stuff back together. Put the crank on the mark before you put the cams and the cam covers on. Now I'm gonna pop this cam cover loose. However, 
because this has VVT hubs, the cam cover may not come up because these VVT hub screws are in the way. Right at this position, I only have one screw up. I'm going to back that screw out of the VVT hub. The same on this one. That way the cam cover will come up. So I'm going to put an 8 millimeter on those two. Back those out. The cams should be fine with the other two screws holding those. So they shouldn't move or adjust. You may want to keep a rag or something up here. Because these... VVT hubs are loaded with oil so when the VVT hub moves it'll probably squirt oil up like this intake one did. I might have wanted to break those loose before I took the timing belt off because they were a little snug and when I pulled them trying to hold the cam still because it's moving it was coughing oil out of these holes here so maybe even wanted to break those loose before I took these sensors off. Because I spit oil all the way up on the windshield up here. Now I'm going to back these screws out until they're flush with the back of the cam. Got that screw flush with the back of the cam hub on both sides. Now I'm ready to pop this cam cover loose. Now it should be easy to get the filters up and out of the way. Mm. You want to pick them up from the front then from the back. Critical point. Warning, do not proceed without paying close attention to what I'm about to say. I wrestled these cams out because another one of the screws was hitting the bottom of the head. So it's probably best to take two of the screws and back them out. The one near the top and the one near the bottom front. Take two of those loose. That way it'd be easier to get that cam out of the head. Hope that helps you understand. Thanks for watching. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.